This right here has been my little ignored area for the frag system for over a year. Because I set that tank up in February of 2016 and I threw everything on top of a salt box. Of a salt I'm not even using. <laughs> so I just used it so if water hit the floor, it wouldn't hit the electronics. But I wanted it to be on this wall. And at the same time, I wanted it to maintain all the wires and make it look nice rather than just be a bunch of stuff screwed to walls and wires everywhere. So if you follow me on Facebook or on Instagram, you might have seen pictures recently. I created something on the CNC specifically for this area. And I thought it'd be a fun project to share on my YouTube channel because I've been sharing things that are either educational or, and I hate to say it, but I have to, advertising because I run a business selling aquarium supplies. But I want to just do something fun and say, hey, that's really cool. And hopefully you guys will agree. So this is Minion, and Minion cuts out things for me on a daily basis. This is a full table CNC router that can handle a four foot by eight foot sheet of acrylic or MDF or whatever it is I plan to cut, but I basically work with acrylic only. What you're watching at this point is in real time what it looks like to cut something out, but I know that that's going to get kind of boring, so I'm not going to have you sit through eight minutes of cutting acrylic. <laughs> because then you're going to tell me, well, that was so boring, I just skipped ahead and I skipped all the most interesting parts of this video. So this was normal speed, and now we're going to jump to high speed. So when you cut out things on your table, the first thing you do is cut out your small stuff first, and then after you've got all your little openings cut out, or your small little holes drilled out, then you can go ahead and cut the big sections to make the actual framework of what you're going to assemble. Of course, there's a front, and then there's going to be the four sides that will abut to the wall. And since I had some extra acrylic left over on this sheet, I went ahead and cut out a piece to put on the back of my electrical panel to act as a splash guard between the sump and my power setup for the 400 gallon reef. Essentially, I hate waste, and so I try to use up every square inch of acrylic whenever I can. These are the final pieces, and then I began to lay it all out and to glue it together on my workbench. Here's my frame with my two holes on the right, and then this is the front area, of course, with the different holes the power cords will go through, and then some components already in place to get a visual. The best part is always when I finally peel off all the paper and see the final shiny finished object. You can see all the holes have been drilled out for where the modules are going to connect. All the shelves are glued in place that so are going to support various pieces, and this is the backside. So this is the thing that I made, and I used 3 8 acrylic. I actually saved this sheet of black acrylic for over a year for this project because no one was going to get it but me. And what I did was I wanted to make something that all this stuff would fit on here nice and cleanly, and all the wires would tuck inside. And so I took my piece of acrylic, I made my box, I already had a general idea of how this would fit. So I, I measured, I think this is 23 by 23. And then I made it about three inches off the wall so wires can hide inside it. And then I took my, actually I took a bunch of extra parts because I'm the king of hoarding and I save everything. And I had extra drivers and I put them here and here. I had an extra battery backup case and I put it here. I took some Vortec power bricks and put them right here. I put my power bar, my extra power bar for the Apex right here. The PM module is gonna go right here for the pH and temperature probe. And then I had to figure out where I'd put holes to run wires inside. Then the other part is how do you get the wires in and out of it when you've installed it on the wall? And I decided what I wanted to do instead of mounting it permanently and then trying to fish a wire from here up to there or possibly across to here, I would make it where I could remove this from the wall, put the wires in the back, put it back on the wall. And so what I did, I'll put this guy down. I made a matching bracket, which still has the paper on it right now. And this will fit on my wall. It'll screw into the sheetrock. And then this piece will fit right on top of that shelf 
and there's two little holes right here that have matching pins that are already glued inside this top piece of the black acrylic. And it was really kind of neat because when I'm cutting this out on the CNC machine, it's a flat piece of acrylic sitting on the table like this. And then when the router bit comes down and it traces around, you end up with a perfect piece in the middle. So I had these perfect circles, had no starting point, no ending point. They were just like a little eyeball. And I was like, that would be awesome. So I'm gonna try and show you these and I hope you can see them, but it's black on black. But there's a dot right there and there's a dot right there. That's my little eyeball piece I'm talking about. I'm gonna kind of tilt this and maybe we'll get some reflections and you'll see here and here. But those little things will just fit on top. And then this is going to go on the wall in this spot right here. And I'm gonna keep it low enough that it won't create a reflection when I'm looking in the tank. And I can have all my electronics right here and they're way off the floor. So now it's time to install it. really well and I actually hit a stud in the wall which I didn't think there was any in that spot it just seemed like everything was hollow when I tapped the wall so I was able to put three screws into these special little anchors that I just love I've had them forever and I'm using them up quickly soon I'll have to switch to the plastic ones you find at Home Depot these are designed for sheetrock they screw right in and I use them to hang lights and I did a lot of stuff in my workshop with these and now I'm using on this guy but there's also a screw through that acrylic bracket straight into a stud and I'm able to now hang it in place. I did a test, barely had enough room. I probably should have scooted it over half an inch that way. But at the time I didn't really think that through as good as I would have liked. And it'll be fine because there's some wiggle room here. So the next thing to do, of course, is to start transferring things up, unplug everything, and then reroute the wires. I didn't really explain to you how I'm doing some of the wires. So let me pop this off for a second. Pull it out. See, it's a little tight. There we go. But right here, on this side of the box, there's a hole up high, and then there's a larger one right here. And this one is because the apex power bar sits right here, and then the power cord will go through this hole, it'll feed across the back and come out, so that way it will be coming out on this side of the box and going up to the outlet on the wall. And then the larger opening, for this section right here is to run all the wires that go to the aquarium itself, like from the skimmer, from the heater, all those things will go through here. But so far, so good. All right, we'll continue. It's done and for the most part it worked out great I mean considering I kind of did it from imagination with a, a few choice measurements but you know until you actually do it you don't know how it's gonna play out and in the case of the power bricks I kind of wish it made the little shelves a little bit longer and created a little bit longer of a box for the cord to bend for that 90 because it kind of pushes the brick I'd like the brick to be there but it's gonna move over about three quarters of an inch. Same thing with the larger brick for the Vectra return pump. And all the wires fit inside beautifully like I hoped. I forgot about one very important wire from the Apex. The Apex is tied into the 400 gallon tank. And then I run a USB wire over the door frame that walks into this room and across this wall. And you can see a little piece of it right here. And I forgot about that wire and it had to come behind. So I had to drill out a small groove toward the back of this finished product so I could create a little gap to tuck that wire through, bring it in, 
and then plug it in right here. And I tested everything. I also had one more little thing that surprised me. I wanted to plug in my smart ATO power supply right here, but it hits this pipe. So I'm using a little one foot extension cord from here to here. This right here just gives me a one foot extension and I can just park it there in the back and that will be just fine and kind of out of sight. I'll just kind of play with it till I'm happy. Eh, that looks pretty good. I'm actually pleased the way it looks and I can now finally see the floor. I can see my dosing containers and know that they need to be refilled because that's one of those things where I have to kind of like inspect and now I'll get a little bit better of a visual. And another little surprise that happened, which worked out beautifully, when I had pre-drilled the holes for the Apex and for the PM and for the battery backup, I just used this bit that I had. And then I had these screws that I got at Home Depot. They're stainless steel. And I thought I'd be pushing them through and then tightening a nut on the other side, which is kind of a beating, right? Well, it turns out my drill bit was just a hair smaller than this. And when I put this screw in there and used the drill, it basically threaded the acrylic for the first time and held everything on perfectly. And that <laughs> saved me 10 minutes of hassle. And of course, in the future, I can just back the screws out, take it off if it fails and replace it with a new one without having to unbolt it. The loose wires, I just kept tucking them in behind. Uh, it worked out exactly as I'd hoped. I'm really excited for the final product and I'm very pleased that everything is working the way it's supposed to and that I have this completed after so long. I really should tackle my projects more quickly because they're, you know, not only are they share worthy, but they also make my life a little bit better. So I hope you like that. I've got some other stuff in the works right now. I still have a plumbing video that I want to do for you. And I've got some product reviews that are desperately overdue that I need to knock out. And uh, there's a, probably gonna be a Macna contest since Macna is gonna be in August which is going to be in New Orleans this uh, August. So you want to make sure that you are thinking of going if you're in the driving or even if you want to fly, fly in. Um, and of course, I'll be there. I'll be representing Milo's Reef and I'll be speaking there as well as uh, selling things from my booth. So I hope you enjoyed this, like I said before. And as you can see, the captive bread tang is checking it out. And I, I'd say this is a project that went well. You may be wondering why I didn't actually put a physical cover over all the electrical or why it's so low on the wall. First answer is I want access to everything just like normal. And think about it, it was sitting on the floor for a year completely wide open to everything happening to it and nothing got wet. So I'm not overly concerned about a splash hitting this and I don't need a cover or a door I have to open every time I want to reach in there and do anything. So no, I don't want a cover. Secondarily, it's down low, so I don't have reflections off the end of the tank when I'm looking at the view of the frag system. I love the clean floor, and I'm glad this project is done. I'd like to thank my son, Philip Levinson, for playing this beautiful music that we're hearing in this video.